Yesterday, President-elect Biden announced his choices for members of his foreign policy and national security team. Now, I don't expect that your philosophical views align much with any of them, but what's your take on their readiness for the job? And what is the biggest national security issue that the incoming administration will be faced with? Yeah, I mean, I, I know many of these people. I think, I think they're competent. I think they will be uh, traditional liberal establishment, democratic uh, in their orientation. And what I hope is we can get back to a nice normal debate uh, on policy and philosophical issues. I'd, I'd welcome it uh, after the last four years, and, and I'm ready to go. Uh, the biggest challenge that they face, the existential challenge for the United States in the 21st century is dealing with China. Uh, if their default position is the position of the Obama administration on China, I, I think we've got real trouble. But I, I do think the popular view of China has changed because of the coronavirus, uh, because of greater understanding of Chinese conduct internationally. Uh, so I think uh, Biden and his team have a real chance to shape a consistent, coherent American and international response to the threat China poses. I hope they take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, sir, there have been some calls uh, from some Democrats for the next administration to investigate and prosecute Trump once he's out of office. Now, you wrote in your book that you found some of his actions with the Ukraine, for example, potentially illegal. Now, based on what you saw, does Trump have real reason to be concerned if the next administration follows through with pursuing him? Well, I think uh, there's a general danger in criminalizing politics in America. Uh, I think that when Gerald Ford pardoned Richard Nixon, he did the country a real service. Uh, it cost him dearly politically, but I think it was the, the correct thing to do. Uh, if Trump is engaged in illegal uh, conduct in his personal capacity, uh, then I don't have any trouble with anybody investigating it. But if it's going to be investigations based on political differences uh, as opposed to outright uh, criminal uh, allegations, that I would be very concerned about it. And sometimes there's a fine line there. But as the Ambassador, law and order president, uh, talk it seems... Okay. Never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can follow up on that, son, if you want. Uh, yeah, uh, well, you know, we, we do have the Constitution for a reason, Ambassador, and, and the constant flouting of the Emoluments Clause and, and, and other, other things during this administration has been problematic, and I would say, uh, and I would offer criminal. But I, I want well, to talk to you about... may I ask, about, I just ask, um, can, you, can you tell me what your understanding of the Emoluments Clause is? I have a very good understanding of the Emoluments Clause, but we don't have enough time to discuss that right now because I want to ask you another question. I went to law school, I believe, like you did, Ambassador. Uh, but you talked uh, a lot about President Trump's lack of discipline. Do you worry that once he's out of office and doesn't have handlers to protect him from himself, he could be a security risk when it comes to, say, revealing national secrets or, or something like that? Because my, my sense has always been he's been somewhat of a national security threat. Yeah, I just back on the emoluments clause, you know, if it was so obvious what he was doing was wrong, why didn't the House impeach him for violations of the clause? Uh, in terms of his national security risk, yeah, I, I think been, he... It would have been helpful if you testified, Ambassador. It would have been helpful I don't, if you testified. I, didn't, I don't have any knowledge of his violation of the emoluments clause, uh, and I did volunteer to testify, and the Senate voted not to have witnesses. Uh, now, back on the national security threat that Trump may pose uh, after his presidency, uh, I do think that uh, there's, there's reason to worry. Uh, but on the other hand, I'd say this. I think uh, uh, he didn't pay an awful lot of attention to most of his intelligence briefings uh, when they were given, at least during my tenure. Uh, much of the time uh, during the briefings was consumed by him talking. Uh, you know, Lyndon Johnson once said, I don't learn very much when I'm talking. Nobody told Donald Trump that. So fortunately, the amount of things he could disclose that would be damaging are a lot more limited than people might think. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> he, he wasn't paying in, enough attention to get us himself in any trouble, apparently. Thanks for coming to the show, uh, Ambassador Bolton. Nice to Thank see you. you. For we'll be right me. back. Happy Thanksgiving.